we do begin tonight with Commitment 2016 coverage and night three of our Granite State debates and the candidates for the first congressional district. Good evening, I'm Tom Griffith. It was a very feisty night for all three on stage. Incumbent Congressman Republican Frank Ginta, Democrat Carol Shea Porter, and Independent Sean O'Connor. I have voted as recently as 2014 for members of both parties. Um, so Which to character Republican did you vote for? You are a Republican. I'm going to back you up on that. I, I, I mean, you see, this is great. I, I, I am a true I moderate because say, they're both trying I to thought, put me into a no, slot. No, no, no. Well, WMUR political director Josh McKelvin moderated tonight's debate, joins us live from the Institute of Politics at St. Anselm College. Josh? Yeah, Tom, you know, over the course of the last four elections, uh, Carol Shea Porter and Frank Ginta have developed quite a political rivalry, and that's often played out on the debate stage before the election. And tonight, they certainly weren't shy about criticizing each other. But this time around, there was a third party independent candidate on stage. And at times, it appeared that Ginta and Shea Porter almost became somewhat unlikely allies in going after the new candidate on stage that was with them. With more on a uh, wrap up of what did take place tonight, let's send it out to Adam Sexton, who has the nuts and bolts. Yeah, Josh, the last three Granite State debates between Carol Shea Porter and Frank Ginta have been tense and testy affairs. This one was a little bit lighter, even when they were mixing it up, and it definitely had something to do with that third person on their debate stage that they were willing to attack. Aggressive in the race and okay, okay, I got, this, I got this, all right? Okay. In their so, fourth Granite so State debate say, matchup, Frank Ginta and Carol Shea Porter joined forces to tag team the new candidate on their turf, Independent Sean O'Connor. For the last decade, the voters of this district have had to choose between one hyperpartisan or the other, and they've fired them constantly, one after another after another. Both repeat candidates took turns bashing O'Connor, Shea Porter taking digs at his business record. He had a boutique business that helped people get into law school. We need jobs that people can actually have right now. Ginta slammed O'Connor as a Bernie Sanders progressive. Mr. O'Connor has identified himself as a progressive Democrat, a Bernie crat, uh, and that's why he was running uh, for a year and a half uh, in the Democratic primary. I understand that b both the congresswoman and the congressman are upset about my meteoric rise in the polls, but the fact <laughs> of the matter is that I created jobs here in New Hampshire. Shea Porter was first elected to Congress in 2006 on her strong opposition to the Iraq War. When it comes to sending ground troops back to the Middle East to defeat ISIS, she says no. We would not be welcomed. Our presence would not be helpful. Now, do we need special forces there? Yes, we do. Frank Ginta stood up for Rochester conservative activist Jerry DeLemus, who is facing charges in connection with the Bundy Ranch standoff against federal agents in Nevada. He went out there as a in a peacekeeping mission. Do I think that there was government overreach here? Yes, I do. When it comes to whether anyone can change the atmosphere in Congress, all three touted their bipartisan credentials. I've worked for Democrats and I've worked for Republicans. You know, my opponents are hyperpartisan, and so they mock me for that. I actually think that there's some value in that. No other Republican can say that they've gotten six pieces of legislation signed into law by this president. President Obama and I don't agree on much, uh, but he was willing to work with me. It's when the Republicans are are taking a trip and they are looking for somebody, they told me they like to go with me because I don't fight with them, and I'm very proud of that. So the two candidates who could barely make eye contact in Granite State debates dating back to 2010 found some common ground tonight in attacking an independent challenger, but how it all shakes out on election day remains to be seen. Josh, let's go back inside to you. Yeah, no question about it, Adam, a very different dynamic in this debate, and that actually carried over to the spin room where all three candidates uh, did take part. Carol Shea Porter, though, for her part, she said that she welcomed Sean O'Connor to the stage. Anybody can run $50, so, and I remind people that I was not the choice in 2006, and you just put your head down and you make the case to the people about why it should be you. So I love the way New Hampshire does politics. Anybody can get on the ballot. There's serving and getting things done, and then there's being an insider within the party, an insider by the establishment. I mean, I, I think it was establishment in this state made it abundantly clear that I'm an outsider. Um, and I will take that label uh, anytime. I think that tonight we saw um, why I'm in this election. It was the uh, 
you know, biannual partisan bickering between Carol Shea Porter and Frank Ginta. Um, and both of them are clearly scared that I'm surging right at the right time because they were attacking me with their typical D.C. politician party lines. I join now by my colleague, WMUR, John DeStaso. He's on the panel tonight. A little bit different tonight, general election oh, yeah. debate with three candidates up there. How do, how do you think? Kinda what's like your takeaway? Kind of like having a little bit of a party crasher. Sure. Uh, those two uh, are become so familiar with each other. I mean, obviously, Frank Inta and Carol Shea Porter, that almost becomes like a choreographed event in some ways. But Sean O'Connor, you know, he changed the dynamic entirely, as was noted. And um, he was attacked by both. One called him uh, Carol yeah, Shea Porter, called him a Republican. Frank Inta called him a Bernie Krat. And it's going to be interesting to see how he ends up affecting this race. He's polling at around the 15 percent mark. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a long shot to win, but it was pretty clear that Carol Shea Porter and, and uh, Frank Ginter think that he could impact this. And at the end right. of the night, all three of them did pretty good, don't you think? Oh, I think they, they all got their points across very, very well. I think that, again, they were all very relaxed on stage, including uh, O'Connor, who was in his first really big debate. And... Um, it's just going to be interesting to see how it breaks out. Both of them have their issues within their own parties to some degree, uh, Carol Shea Porter and, and Frank Itta, and we'll see uh, who, he, who Sean O'Connor impacts the most. And John DeStaso, he is on top of everything he shows. He never stops working. He snapped this photograph. Everybody was wondering about uh, yeah. how things are going to be there it is. after the election. I guess there is they, hope. They, they All the division. Out, they walked out with their families together. They were walking down the hall, and I asked them, hey, turn around. Good picture. And they did, and there they are. So there it is. The old rivals. All right, it was a good night, an interesting night indeed. Thanks very much. Thank and, you, of course, we'll be back here once again tomorrow night with the final night of the Granite State debates with the second congressional district candidates on stage, Annie Custer, the incumbent, and a Republican challenger, Jim Lawrence. But for now, let's send it back to you in the studio. I'm Josh McKelvin, WMUR News 9. All right, gentlemen, thank you. And our Commitment 2016 coverage never stops on WMUR.com and on our mobile app. Click on our politics section, and there you will find extended clips from tonight's debate.